sliding nuts. Do they drive you nuts? Let me help. The world of Eurorack is polarized around these things. You either love them or you hate them. Personally, I love them, and I want to show you why. Some people prefer tapped rails, like the IntelliGel case, that has the holes that are drilled in these strips, and the distance between each hole that the screws screw into is fixed. The other approach is to put these little sliding nuts inside of the rails, and then they can move. Those who hate them, hate them because it's hard to get the screw to bite the nut, or it's hard to get it to align under the hole. My first case was an elite modular case, and it had these sliding nuts. And I had a heck of a time in the very beginning. Even if the nut was aligned under the hole of the module, I still couldn't always get the screw to bite. First change I made was to order longer screws, but I overshot that amount and I ended up biting into the back of the rails. So, you know, when I sold my Elite Modular case, you could see all these little, you know, digs that happened. And you can see it's not happening with this case. Well, I'm using the screws and the washers that Submodular included with the case. I use a driver like this. It's an M2 driver. The important thing to understand is that these screws that I use are M2.5 threaded. In other words, these nuts are M2.5. And they use an M2 driver. I made the mistake the first time, bought M2.5 screws to fit the M2.5 square nuts, and figured, oh, I must... I guess I'll get an M2.5 driver. Well, it was too big. M2.5 drivers are what are used for the M3 screws. Those are the kind of screws that are used in, say, the IntelliGel performance case, the 7U. Those are great. I mean, you know, I, I like it. But I prefer the size of these smaller screws. I like the way they look. So why are sliding nuts such a pain in the... Well you often can't get them to align under the module, right? So what do people do? They probably take a driver like this and they probably go and they move them around. Notice the two move together, little trick. Just do a quick little move and you'll, you know, take whatever has been magnetized and just kind of separate them. Which is cool because you can pull a bunch at once and then do a little flick, you know? and they'll separate. So you can align them under where a module is supposed to go. Yeah, that's great, right? But it's not really the best. How do you get it perfectly aligned under the module? Well, let me show you. So today, I received a shipment uh, from Make Noise, and I'm very excited to show... Tempe, whoa! Actually, no, that's not what I'm talking about. Um, I am talking about that, but even more exciting... Bum, 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 bum. Oh, look at that. It's Renee too. It's the new Renee. It's the new Renee. So we're going to put these in the case today and I'm going to show you exactly what you do. How do we get that to align? Oh man, it's so tough. Well, check it out. It's not. You just use one of these. What is this? It's a pen magnet. As long as you have these tools, it works just fine. All you freaking do is go like this and align the screw. And then you put one of these on the screw, on the driver, you put the screw, and then you put this screw on the driver. I have a washer in there. I hold it with my finger like this, and I align it. I drop it in, I turn the freaking thing, and it's done. The hardest part can sometimes be to get that screw that is sort of that nut that is magnetized to the next one over. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but really I like to leave an extra one in there. Um, so I'll just go and I'll grab another one. You know, you could say separate the rest, grab this, bring it over, boom. Or you could really work really hard to get this freaking thing to like drag over here. Sometimes you can't and you have to like tilt the case. So I just go bump. Bump, grab another screw, put it on the driver, 
hold it in place. I like to actually hold it in place with another hand because I can get a better 90 degree, you know, I can get a better angle at getting the screw to bite the nut. You can actually do this if you have room in your case. You just slide over and now it's in place. But really, just a tap of the magnet is the real secret here. I'll put a link in the description for these tools. And screw it in and you're done. Oh man, I am so excited. This Renee was my first sequencer, the first Renee. And the fact that there's a two, it's, it's so exciting these days right now. There's so many version twos of things coming out. Planner, I freaking loved the first one. It was a little bit of a drag with the first one. I always wanted the joystick on the bottom. So when you reverse it, the A, B, C, D, and the X, Y, everything is inverted. And so I used to always put a little SPO, a little SSF SPO scale polarizer, two channel polarizer next to it so that I could polarize the outputs so that X value zero, it was here and X value max was here and Y value, you know, minimum and max were like that so that it moved the way I wanted it to and everything wasn't reversed. This one is made this way, so it's already not reversed. So it, in essence, it takes up 4 HP less than my other one because I would always use that other 4 HP. Plus you can record, you can loop the, the gestures, the gestural movements, it's amazing. And it feels super smooth. Whereas the other one, I had to kind of like brace myself like some guitar players do with their pinky, you know, to be able to get control very fine control. This is so, uh, there's pr uh, back pressure kind of to, to the movement. So you can just move easily and it, and it makes it smooth for you. So I, I'm so excited about this. But uh, what I'm getting at here, um, Tides 2 just came out recently. Uh, it was just released by Mutable Instruments and that was my, Tides 1 was my first oscillator. So we now have my first sequencer with a whole new redo. Enough of this talk, let's, let's plug this freaking thing in. Oh, doesn't that look good? I actually find sliding nuts to be easier than tapped ones. Because with tapped ones, certain modules end up with gaps in between uh, because they're just not aligning right. Certain modules, when I, I had gotten Hermod briefly, and it's like they drilled it wrong or something because the freaking thing um, wouldn't fit in the rails with the rails. So, you know... You don't have to deal with like people who don't like do their measurements right or whatever it is that requires that. Um, I don't mean to be harsh, but like companies like Make Noise and Mutable Instruments with the small holes that don't give you a lot of play, I've never had issues with them. They're always in alignment. Granted, there was an issue with Tempe a long time ago, but they fixed it. They gave, they sent new panels out. So I got a new panel um, for my old Tempe uh, when it, you know, when it turned out mine was one of the numbers that, that wasn't uh, um, aligned. But you know, it's fine when companies like IntelliGel do the wider ones. It does make it easier, the wider holes in the panels. And, and of course, Chaos does it too, Chaos Devices. You know, it makes it uh, easier to align on a tapped rail system. But I think the holes look better because it aligns your screws and then you don't end up with any space around the outside. So, you know, I'm I'm part of this camp. I'm part of the sliding nuts, circular holes in the module camp. So we're gonna, um, I'm just pushing it down because it wants to pop up a little because of the power behind. Just taking that over, sliding it over, that aligned, doing the same thing, taking these guys over, sliding it over, tapping. You don't even need to tap sometimes. You can just um, wave it uh, centered above the hole and it, and it works. Sometimes you'll put the screw in and it'll kick the It'll sort of knock the uh, nut to the side. Uh, and then you just use the magnet again to align it back. I'm gonna assume this is aligned down here. I can't really see it from where I'm at. That feels right. Great, so now it's in. So what I like to do is then take everybody on a row that's all uh, loosely screwed in and move them all as one piece left and right until it aligns like with the top row. So first I'm going to slide, well, first I'm going to loosen planar because that one's still tightened down because I wanted to play with it and not have it move around. So I'm going to just move it up as, as high as it will comfortably go. And I'm going to grab everybody so I can slide it all. And that looks pretty good. So 
it's up. I'm tightening them all down. With these modules, I try to like sort of sometimes center the screw because OCD. And that looks great. Do the same with Tempe. I'm going to move it up and try to align with the top. I can't tell if it's exactly aligned because these are sort of obscuring my vis vision. 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 This is literally the first time I've turned on Renee and Tempe. Thanks for checking this out. Thanks for watching. If you have a case of the sliding nuts and you just don't know what to do, you know, now you know what to do. Now you know that it's actually really easy. You just need the right tool for the job. Get one of these freaking things and be done with it. All right, thanks.